All right, so real quick, uh, I just made a course all about the Sony ZV-1. And so if you wanna check that out, learn more about this camera, then the link will be down below. I'm also planning on making a camera settings video about the Sony ZV-E10. So if that's something that you wanna see, then let me know in the comments below. Maybe pull out a little bit wider, there we go. Yeah. All right, let's get right to it. So what's crazy is that both these cameras, the ZV-E10 and the ZV-1, cost exactly the same, at least the time of this recording. They're exactly the same price. They're very similar cameras. Of course, this has interchangeable lens compatibility, the suggested point and shoot camera, but overall, they're pretty similar cameras. So the question is, which budget camera is right for you? First, let's talk about the similarities between both these cameras. Both cameras have a flip out screen. They shoot 4K video up to 30 frames per second and HD video up to 120 frames per second. Both cameras can live stream. They have incredible features like product showcase, background defocus, active stabilization, they both share the same onboard mic on top of the camera. And even if you don't have an external mic to use with these cameras, the audio coming from these mics are totally usable, especially in a pinch. Both cameras have a zoom rocker, which is handy, similar button layouts, similar menu system, although the ZV-E10 has a slightly more organized menu system. And lastly, both cameras cost the same. The differences, however, well, there's quite a lot. Of course, lens mount, you can attach any E-mount lens on the ZV-E10, where the ZV-1, you cannot because it's a point and shoot camera. Sensor size, that's also different. On the ZV-E10, it's an APS-C sensor, where the ZV-1 has a one inch sensor. So low light performance on the ZV-1, not so good. The ZV-E10 shoots 24 megapixels, where the ZV-1 only shoots 20 megapixels. Still better than my A7S 3 which shoots 12 megapixel photos, but that's that's a video for another time. Next, exterior build. The ZV-E10 feels a bit more plastic because it is all plastic, where the ZV-1 is mostly plastic as well, but at least you get some rubber where the grip is and where the thumb grip is behind the camera. So in a weird way, the ZV-1 feels a little more robust, where the ZV-E10, it feels, it feels kind of cheap, not gonna lie. The ports are different on both cameras. The ZV-1 only has a mic jack, uh, a mini HDMI port, as well as a micro USB port. The ZV-E10 also has a mic jack. It also has a headphone jack, so that's cool. A USB-C port for charging and live streaming, and a micro HDMI port. Both cameras have a mode button on top. On the ZV-E10, you can only cycle through three different modes, photography mode, video mode, and SNQ mode, where on the ZV-1, if you press the mode button, it'll open up this menu where you have more options to choose from. The ZV-1 features the high frame rate mode, meaning that you can shoot up to 960 frames per second. And even though the image quality isn't really good at 960 frames per second, at least you have the ability to shoot that high. Where on the ZV-E10, you don't have a high frame rate feature at all. You have S and Q, you can shoot up to 120 frames per second, but no high frame rate. And speaking of high frame rates, when you're shooting at 120 frames per second on the ZV-1, for some reason, the autofocusing performance isn't as responsive as the ZV-E10. I'm not sure exactly which one it is, either the contrast detection or the face detection that's disabled, but when you're shooting at 120 frames per second on the ZV-1, it's just not as responsive. It's totally fine when you're shooting at 60 frames per second, but at 120, not so much. Both cameras share similar features like background defocus, product showcase, active stabilization. And even though that there is a crop factor when using active stabilization with both cameras, it's a lot more severe on the ZV-E10. I'm not exactly sure why, but it's definitely noticeable. As far as the menu layout, they're both fairly similar. I mean, they don't feature that cool new touchscreen menu featured on the A7S III. It still features the older Sony menu system, except that the ZV-E10, the organization of the menu system is a lot better. And the last major difference between both these cameras is something that I don't think many people talk about, and it's the video recording file size. Both cameras can film for hours, no problem there. I mean, I've offloaded 24 gigabyte file sizes from the ZV-1 when I've filmed for an hour or two, but with the ZV-E10, when you're recording for a long time, the camera will split your video file into four gigabyte segments. I mean, it might be like 4.2 gigabytes or 4.5 gigabytes, but unlike the ZV-1 and most Sony cameras, you're not gonna get video file sizes more than four and a half gigabytes. So that's kind of annoying, but something that you should know. Something you should also know is that the ZV-E10 is actually more expensive because you do have to buy additional lenses. So just keep that in mind. But with all that said, which camera is right for you? Well, if you're someone who's just starting out and you're looking for a camera to kind of do it all and you don't want to have to buy an additional lens or a mic to start creating content, then I would go with the Sony ZV-1. I mean, it's great, it's compact, shoots really great 4K video, and I like using it as a secondary B camera. Like I use this camera to shoot B-roll footage 
of myself and is so small that I can slip into my camera bag or my pocket if I want to. The ZV-1 also makes for a great top-down camera because it's so light. I don't have to worry about a heavy camera hanging over my head to do those top-down shots. But overall, I think the ZV-1 is not only a great starter camera, but a great companion camera as well. The ZV-E10 is also a great starter camera and a great companion camera. But if you know that you're going to invest in lenses in the future, like you want to build up your gear over time, then I would go with the Sony ZV-E10 because of that interchangeable lens compatibility. And because you can use any mount lens, whether it's APS-C or full frame, whether it's Tamron, Sigma, or a Sony G Master lens, like that alone just makes it worth it to get the ZV-E10 as a starter camera or even a companion camera. In fact, if you're looking for a YouTube studio camera, like a camera just to sit on a tripod or on your desk and just to be your main YouTube camera, the ZV-E10 is actually a perfect camera for that, definitely more than the ZV-1. But for me, which camera would I keep the ZV-1, hands down. I mean, come on, it's a compact 4K camera that matches the footage shot with my a7S III. Like this is such a good companion camera and I freaking love it. Like I know there's a lot of flaws with the ZV-1, a lot of things that I don't like about this camera, but because it's so small, I can easily pack this into any camera bag. I can shoot with this camera without being too obtrusive. I can shoot 4K video, I can shoot slow motion video, I can take photos. I can do all of that with a tiny compact camera and I would choose this over the ZV-E10. But don't get me wrong, the ZV-E10 is a great camera, a great starter camera, a great companion camera, but because the A7S III is my main camera, I just don't really have a need for the ZV-E10. I just find more value for my line of work to have a small compact camera like the ZV-1 that goes along with my A7S III. And if I were to start all over again, I would definitely go with the ZV-E10 knowing that I would upgrade to higher quality lenses in the future. What's this box that I keep kicking? Oh. That was the return box for the ZV-E10, and I just realized I should have returned this camera last week. Sorry, Sony. All right, well, hopefully this video helps you decide which camera to get, either the Sony ZV-E10 or the ZV-1. If you have any questions about either one of these cameras, then let me know in the comments below. I've had this camera for over a year, and I've used this camera for almost four months now. So yeah, any questions you have, let me know in the comments below. All right, well, huge thanks to Sony for letting me keep this for five years. I really appreciate that. But huge thanks to you for watching. Thumbs up, subscribe, all those good things down below, and I'll see you in the next one. Oh,